This is a Mark 7 VW Golf R and if you're even contemplating buying one, stop there. Watch this video because I'm going to show you all the things you need to check to make sure you get a good car. Let's go! So never a good sign when we head straight under the bonnet, but take it from me, these are good reliable cars. So there's just a few things we need to be careful to double check. First up is coolant leaks. So when you arrive, what you want to do is have a look under the car, make sure there's no fluids of any kind under there, also check on the ground. It's important that you repeat that check as well, just in case the seller's trying to pull a fast one and has maybe mopped up the mess before you've arrived. Now, if it is leaking coolant, chances are it's the thermostat housing or the water pump that's leaking. Now, they're not hugely expensive to repair, but definitely something we want to build into that deal, keep you a bit of money back so you can repair them. Here's another thing. When you pop that bonnet to take a look under here, did it pop okay? Because it's not all that uncommon that the cable slips off and you're not able to pull the bonnet release. Now what a lot of owners do is they'll remove this part here and cable tie it in before it slips off. Not a bad idea. The final thing to mention under here is are there any modifications? Now it is pretty common on these cars, being really performance orientated, that the owner is going to have added some bits and pieces. Now I'm not saying for one minute avoid cars that have modifications done to them. What I am saying however is check the sort of brand of those modifications. Are they bargain basement items that the owners sort of flung onto the car and also check how have they been fitted. Has it been a reputable garage that's fitted them and all the receipts are in order or has he had his friends sort of throw them on the car? How about the bodywork on the car that you're looking at? Does it have any dodgy colour matches? Are the panel gaps all okay? These are definitely things we want to check because it is a performance orientated car and as such it's going to have been driven quite quick. Now something else we want to be sure of is the wheel condition. Now obviously this car's got a really nice set of aftermarket wheels on it, but if it's the standard 19 inch Pret wheels, you're going to want to make sure they don't have any obvious defects on them. Reason being, they were really susceptible to either cracking or buckling. Now we'll get a better feel and be able to make sure that's not the case on the test drive, which will come a little bit later, but for now, just have a look for any obvious defects on them. In addition, we want to check the consumables. This is something we do on every car. So how do the tires look? Do they have plenty of tread on them? How are the brake discs? Are they lit? How are the brake pads? Have they got plenty of meat left on them? Now if they don't, don't let that be a deal breaker. Just bring it into the negotiation and save yourself a little bit of money to rectify these points. Now this next check we're gonna go on to is something you definitely don't wanna miss out. It's not a huge deal, but it's definitely something that's gonna impact your buying experience. But before we get to that, if you're enjoying this video, do please go ahead and give it a like. And also, we create buyer's guides and reviews on cars just like this every week. So if you're enjoying it, consider subscribing as well. Anyway, on to this next check. Definitely easy to miss on the seller's driveway, but you're gonna notice pretty quickly when it comes to putting fuel in. And that is double check that the fuel flap door opens correctly. What happens there is the lock can be a little sticky. So sometimes a silicon spray can sort it out. Worst case scenario, it's gonna require a new actuator. All right, so as we head on to this interior, hold your horses. I know you want to get into that driver's seat and take it a test drive, but a couple of things to check first. One being the rear passenger foot wells. Get your hand in here under the mat and make sure the floor isn't damp. Gary, this is all wet in here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so if the rear footwell is wet, what tends to happen there is it's the seal around the speakers, believe it or not, starts to let go, lets rainwater and whatnot in, and yeah, the whole thing just gets a little bit fusty. This car is fine. 
Next up, the gearbox in the car that you're looking at. Two options, you probably already know that though, the manual or the DSG. Now unfortunately they've both got an inherent problem to be aware of, and that is with the manual tends to be the clutch. The clutch is the weak point. Even with standard power, they can start to slip and shred the clutch. So again, on that test drive, we're gonna to want to make sure we test that thoroughly, make sure it's not the case, because that is a pricey job to rectify. Now, if it's the DSG box and the one that you're looking at, it was a gear selector issue. Now, in times gone by, that used to be a really expensive repair, but it's gotten a little better in recent years. Either way, you don't want to buy a car with that problem, and thankfully, it's easy to spot, because when you move it out of park, it's gonna flash up on the dash. It would take a pretty brazen seller to try and get away with that one. So as you're probably going to tell quite quick here, this car's not standard. <laughs> so first thing for you to check is make sure the car feels responsive. These are lively cars, performance cars. So yeah, give it a bit of stick and see how it feels. Yep, double tick that box, this one's responsive. So here's something else you need to check, and that is that the Haldex system is functioning correctly. I'm gonna need to go up a gear there because this car is just so loud. So what happens is through lack of maintenance, not really a fault of the Haldex system itself, but through lack of maintenance, you start to lose the rear drive. So here's how you can check it on that test drive. Take it a run, particularly if it's wet, and give the car a bit of stick at lower speeds. Make sure it's not just spinning the fronts and the backs aren't doing anything to help the traction. If that's the case, then the Haldex system isn't working correctly. Be very careful with that. When that Haldex service does get done, you want to be sure to clean the filter as well as change the oil. So as with any car, when we test drive it, you want to have a listen out for any strange creaks or knocking noises that might indicate some worn suspension components. Golf R is no different. However, pay particular attention because what these cars do tend to wear out quite quickly are the top mounts on the front. Either the front top mounts or the top mount bearings wear out. If you like pops, it's a car for you. <laughs> That's mad, man. But above all else guys, enjoy the process. These are awesome cars, so take your time to find a good one. Any questions, drop it in the comments section below. But for now, I'm off to have some fun. Good luck looking for your perfect Golf R.